could the water in your RV be making you sick? And did you know that you still need to sanitize your fresh water system in your RV from time to time? In this video, we're gonna sanitize our fresh water system and show you step by step how to keep your fresh water system clean as well. So stay tuned. We are Charity, Ben, Dakota, and Trinity. We decided we didn't want to wait for a life of adventure. So in 2017, we bought our first RV and set off to live a life of travel in the USA. We've visited over 38 states in three years and have many more to go. Follow along to learn all the best places to see, RV and travel tips, and much more. Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is called Grateful Glamper. And that is because we are very grateful to be living this life of RV living and travel. And we really like to practice gratitude by thinking of one thing that we're thankful for each day. So we invite you to do the same and maybe drop it in the comments below. Today, we are going to sanitize Work the, size, sanitize the freshwater system of our RV. We haven't done this in a while, and this is really something that you should be doing from time to time and it is time so we use our water for lots of things obviously hand washing things like brushing your teeth making coffee we do have a separate filter to filter the actual drinking water but it's still pulling that water from the fresh water tank especially if we are in a boondocking or a lot docking or a mooch docking type of situation super important to always keep that water system clean and sanitized. So that is what we are going to do today. And we're gonna start off with step one. Step one is to be sure to shut off the valves for your hot water heater. The chemical name for bleach is sodium hypochlorite. Now you can probably guess from the word sodium in the title that there's a salt component to that. Most water heaters that are not tankless inside of an RV are metal and salt and metal. If you have been anywhere that uses salt on the roads produces rust as you well know. So we wanna make sure that we don't have any of the bleach solution that we're going to use to sanitize the water system in the hot water heater. So the very first thing that we want to do and that you will want to do as well when sanitizing your system is to turn off the valves to the hot water heater to make sure that you don't have any of this bleach solution running into the hot water heater. So let's go do that right now. Where's my handy dandy husband, Ben? Ben, where's Ben? Oh, hey dear, right here. I'll be right there. <laughs> All right, let's go do this. Where's the hot water heater valves? Did you figure this out? Cause I don't know. Um, I did. So okay, good. I'm just glad you know. come on in the RV with me and I'll show you where it is. Let's do it. Okay. So Ben is telling me they're down here under the sink. Right down there. But where? Like, I don't see anything under the sink that... Right there. See oh. that valve right here? <laughs> the big valve that says bypass? Bypass. <laughs> yep. Well, that's easy peasy. Yep. So basically, this is a normal flow. And then once you pull this up, that bypasses the water heater. Now, uh, this is nice on this particular RV setup. And I would imagine maybe ones that are a little bit on the newer side would be similar where instead of having a separate valve for hot and cold water, this is just a straight bypass for the whole water heater system. So that's kind of nice. If you have an older RV, you might want to check because there could possibly be two valves, one for hot, one for cold, but we got it easy today. Wow. If RV life was only this easy <laughs> all the time, we'd be set. <laughs> no kidding. So step two is we wanna make sure that our fresh water tank is about at half. So let's go check the status of our fresh water tank and see where we're at if we need to adjust that level at all before we get started. Let's go. All right, let's check fresh. Oh, we're full on fresh. 
All right. So we need to let some water out. With the fresh water being full at the moment, we want to let out a little bit. You really ideally want your fresh water tank to be at about half because when we go to put this water bleach solution in the tank, we want to fill the rest of the tank then with that. So it has a good chance to kind of agitate in the tank and mix together. And so it will be full, but we don't want to start with it full. So let's go let a little bit of water out of the tank and go to the next step. So on our 2004 Fleetwood Discovery Class A motorhome, we do have a drain tube that's located inside one of the basement compartments. So what I'm gonna do is just open this guy up and then show you this. And what you do basically is just uh, turn this to, to drain the water out of the tank. You have to do it the right way. There we go. And there the we have RV machine. So we should mention that your application could be a little bit different, but most of these systems are set up fairly similar. So there should be some sort of a actual drain valve for your fresh water tank. Yeah. You should have like the hot water heater shut off. So they just could maybe be in a little bit of a different yeah. spot, but just do some snooping or always yep. check your owner's manual. That's a great yeah. resource. All right, so now Charity should go and check the level and let oh, me yeah. know when it is at half full. Okay, so go let me know when it's half full. I'm checking, I'm checking, I'm going really fast don't want to let out more water than what we need to. We are still full. Still full? I know, right. I guess I didn't need to rush. This wasn't a rush job like I thought it was. Just, now I know. So I just checked and now we're at three quarters. So this thing holds a ton of water. This particular rig is 86 gallons of fresh water which is important to know if you're gonna do this, you need to know what the capacity is in your fresh water because we're gonna tell you here in just a few minutes about the ratios of bleach to water that you wanna use depending upon how many gallons that you have. So make sure that you keep watching because we'll go over that here in a few minutes. But for right now, still waiting for this to finish draining. My goodness, this thing holds a ton of water. A few moments later. All right, are we at half yet? Yeah, I just checked, we're at half. So before we go to the next step, let's talk real fast about some supplies that you're going to need. Some household bleach, a water pitcher, you're going to need a measuring cup, and we are going to use a funnel to put this into our fresh water tank. You can also alternatively use a piece of cut off hose that you can use as a siphon hose. Mm -hmm. The next step is to mix one cup of bleach for every 50 gallons of fresh water. Now, we actually took this measurement and ratio directly from Todd, who runs the Tech Tip Tuesday over at the National RV Training Institute out of Texas. So we're gonna go with the recommendation straight from the pros. And for us, since we have an 86 gallon fresh water tank, that means we need about one and three quarters cup of bleach. So I'm going to measure out one and three quarters cup of bleach put it into my pitcher, fill this with water, and then we'll go put this directly into the fresh water system and move on to the next step. Now we're ready for the step to go put this in the fresh water tank. So how we're going to do that is with a funnel and we're just gonna dump it directly into the fresh water fill on the side where we would just connect a hose if we were filling it from that side. Okay, now that that step is done, the next step is to fill the fresh water tank. So we're gonna go grab the hose and we wanna put it in here since this is where we actually injected the bleach mixture into. That way it just cleans out this whole filler neck and everything as well. So let's go get the hose. Mm -hmm. All right, coming over. All right. I have the hose. So. Let's uh, put it in there and get all handy dandy zero G hose. 
All right, I'm gonna go turn it on. Ready? I was just gonna say, do we wanna just make a little note about the zero G hose, mm -hmm. man? Because this hose is totally revolutionary. And we'll put a link in the comments below for this hose on Amazon because this is great to carry when you're RVing because it just compacts up so nicely. So had to just give a little plug for the zero G, no affiliation, no sponsorship, just a product we genuinely love. All right, I'm gonna go turn her on. Is she filling up? We're filling it up. <laughs> Reminds me of that Muppet movie when Kermit had amnesia and he saw a sign that said fill her up. And so he told everybody his name was Philip Phil because he couldn't remember his name. <laughs> Philip Phil. What's your name? Um, uh, Phil. Uh, fill up. Fill up, Phil. Use the cap. All right, fresh water tank is now full with this bleach mixture in it. So we are gonna go inside for this very next step. Let's go inside. Okay, now that we have this bleach mixture in our fresh water tank, we want to run this through the lines up and out of all of the faucets. So we're gonna hit the kitchen faucet, the bathroom sink faucets, and the goal here is, is to pull this bleach mixture up out of the fresh water tank and into the lines so that the lines are going to be getting sanitized. Now, super important here that if you're doing this while you're at a campground, that you don't use the water source from the campground. You need to pull directly from the fresh water tank now where we have put this bleach solution into. So if you're hooked up at a campground while you're doing this process, you probably wanna just disconnect from the water at the camp ground just to be sure that you're not accidentally pulling from that water source. So let's turn on all of the faucets and get some of this bleach mixture up. We'll know when we've done that by just, we'll smell an odor of bleach as we're running the water in the faucets. So a few other things that you want to consider having on hand for this particular process. If you have some sort of inline water filter for your drinking water that cannot be bypassed for this particular process, you wanna have an extra one to be able to replace that with. So for our filtered drinking water here at our sink, I've got an extra filter that uh, goes under the sink. When we're completely done with this process, I'll just replace it with a new one. It's been about a year since we replaced it anyway, so it's just time to replace it. The other thing is, is that you want to have some water on hand for things like washing your hands or brushing your teeth while you're doing this process. Now that we've got all of the water up through the lines, we need to let this sit in the lines and in the tank for about eight to 12 hours. Ideally, if you can do this on a travel day, is best because then you kind of get that water sloshing around in there. We are at our home base at the moment, so doing it on a travel day isn't going to work for us at the moment. So we're just going to let it sit for the next eight to 12 hours before that we go on to the next step of basically flushing everything back out. More moments later. All right, so next day, we're gonna go finish up the sanitization process. So now what we need to do, since we've had this kind of bleach water solution sitting in the lines overnight, is we need to flush everything out. So we are hooked up to a basically way to dump here at our home base. So we're going to be able to have our gray open into the dump to be able to have that flow through. But what we need to do now is we need to basically empty our fresh water, flush it out, and then refill our fresh water, flush it out until we don't smell bleach anymore. So let's run inside and turn on all the faucets and basically run everything completely out of the system through the gray and out into the dump. And then we'll fill it up again and just kind of repeat this process until that we no longer smell any bleach. Work those thighs sanitize. Work those thighs sanitize.
We wanna thank MyWaggle.com for sponsoring today's video. You can save 50% off a pet monitor at MyWaggle by using the code GLAMPER50, or if you just use the link in the description below, you will automatically save that 50% off at checkout. We love the Waggle Pet Monitor for monitoring temperature in our RV while we're away, but we also love the fact that you don't need Wi-Fi to use the Waggle Monitor since it uses 4G cellular service. If you travel with pets in your RV, a temperature monitor is a must in case there would be a power outage or something like that, and you wanna make sure that your furry friends are safe if they're in your rig, when you're not. So make sure to check out my Waggle at the link below. All right, we are all sanitized now. So we know that our fresh water is good and safe to drink, no harmful bacteria or anything like that. So we are good to go for the next trip out. Charity goes with the tubey thing. So tubey. We tubey thing down in our basement compartment. Just touched my Sorry. boob. It's not an issue for us. Weight's not an issue here. <sighs> All right, she filling her up. Yep. She is she filling up? <laughs> All of the above. Yes. Yeah. If you found this video helpful in any way, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, what are you waiting for? Just go ahead and do that now. If you would like to see more videos with some RV tips, maybe a little bit of maintenance. You can check those out right over here. And if you'd like to see some of our most popular videos where we go to stores and show you products for RV living at different stores, you can check those out right over here. And if we don't see you on the road, we'll see you in the next video.